It's Friday, and we try to do a little bit of kind of education on Fridays on this program and a little bit of history. And I, I wanted tonight to warn you and be the first to bring it to you. Do not listen to anyone like me um, that is telling you that religion is really important and we all have to have religion if they are also someone who is a big government progressive. Extraordinarily dangerous um, because then it's just a co-opt. I want to be extraordinarily plain with you. Um, I, there are good and decent people who are atheist. Um, all it requires is self-regulation. George Washington talked about self-regulation. The best way to regulate the self, the best way to be able to have um, freedom is to be able to have a system that allows people to self-regulate. I happen to be a deep believer in, in God and, and a recovering alcoholic. There's no way, if it wasn't for my wife and God, sorry, honey, but not in that order, um, I wouldn't be alive today. Um, but the key here is small, limited government. That's what our founders believed. And they fought for you know, the rights for people to worship God in the way of their understanding. But it's important if we're going to reorder things and get them back. What are we missing? What happened to us? Well, God was the first principle. Let's put him back into uh, the proper place. Now, co-opting of religion by government is extraordinarily dangerous. And Kitty Worthman is here. She grew up in Austria under Hitler and warns Americans today of the dangers of giving up our freedom. Pastor Lawrence White is the, um, uh, is the pastor at Savior Lutheran Church in Texas. And Ralph Reed is the boogeyman. And uh, I'm going to talk to him here in a second. He is the author of a brand new book called The Confirmation. And I asked Ralph to be here. And Ralph, you're, hang on, because I'm going to point out how dangerous you really are here in a second. But I wanted to, I wanted to go to Kitty and I wanted to go to Pastor here on, on two things. As you were flying, Kitty, you came in from one of the Dakotas, right? South Dakota. South Dakota, which is Great beautiful. Great state. The, the mountain and everything yes. is beautiful. Um, so South Dakota, you fl it took you a while to get here. Pastor, you came from Houston. You flew in. Yes. As you were on the plane, what was the one thing that you said to yourself, I have to have the American people hear this? What was it? We elected Hitler in Austria by 98% of the vote by means of the ballot box. The first thing what Hitler did, he gave us free radios. Then he nationalized the radio stations. <laughs> And if you listen to a foreign radio station, there was death penalty. You did not turn on BBC or Switzerland. Then he looted the Jewish banks. And then he nationalized the banks. Then he nationalized our only car industry. Austria produced a little car, a little bit bigger than a Fiat. I, I think we know where you're going. Are you, are, do, does this keep you up at night? Yes, sometimes it does. Then he nationalized education, and that literally happened overnight when I walked into my classroom and the crucifix was gone. Then he nationalized health care. We had excellent health care in Austria before Hitler. My brother-in-law would tell me it was like practicing medicine on a conveyor belt Everybody rushed to the doctor for everything and anything. Many, many doctors left the country, including my own husband. Okay, I have to take a break, and then I want to come back. I want to talk to you. What did you say? And then to the audience. Next. We're back with our uh, back with our panel. Um, we have Kitty Worthman, we have uh, Ralph Reed, and we have Pastor Lawrence White with us. And Pastor, I want to ask you quickly: When you were on the plane, what was the message that you wanted to get to people? What keeps me up at night, Glenn, is an experience I had about 12 years ago with my two sons. We were on a research trip to Germany. I took them one bleak December afternoon out to the memorial at the Sachsenhausen concentration camp just outside Berlin. We went through the whole thing. They saw the museum. They saw the horror photos of the inmates. And two 25-year-olds who were joking and jostling got quieter and quieter 
as we walked through medical laboratories where grotesque experiments were performed without anesthetic because mm -hmm. these were subhuman Jews and gypsies. Finally, we got to the crematoria, the ovens in the back. Three days after Christmas, December the 28th, there on the ground is a wreath. I read the German inscription and translated for my sons. It said, from the Christians of Germany, we kneel before God in bitter regret and humble repentance, and we ask his forgiveness for the death of the Jews and all the others who perished in this wretched place. Now, those boys have always been pro-life. They've never had a choice in the matter. But there, at Sachsenhausen, as they saw what can happen when the people of God fail to be the people of God. For, for the pocketbook and not for right. their faith. Ralph, you, I wanted to bring you in because you are a guy who, you're the boogeyman, Christian coalition, you're the worst, you're going to be rounding up gays and anybody who's different and not, you're going to be baptizing people in the basement of the White House. Um, you are the, the boogeyman that everyone will say. Um, what, how do you respond to that? That, that? that you just want to control everyone through faith and government? Well, you know, Glenn, we've seen this movie before. I mean, in 1994, at about this time, 16 years ago, almost to the day, the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee held a news conference and said, you can't elect a Republican Congress because Christians will be in charge of the government. Boo, aren't you scared? <laughs> the result was 54 House seats, 10 Senate seats, including two switches, first Republican Congress in 40 years, and yes, we had the ability to see our public policy goals realized. What were they? A $500 per child tax credit to lower the crushing tax burden on the American family. Banning partial birth abortion, which 72% of the American people supported, and which Daniel Patrick Moynihan, a pro-choice Democrat, says was infanticide. Balancing the budget for the first time in 40 years. Welfare reform, moving people from dependency and multi-generational poverty to individual self-initiative and dignity. That's what we wanted. It was the mainstream American values. And what's really dangerous, Glenn, isn't faith. Faith isn't a threat to democracy. It's essential to democracy. What's dangerous Republic, yes. is when people or faith are told to be silent and shut up. In, in the confirmation, I've got a man of faith nominated to the Supreme Court who is asked by the Judiciary Committee, are you sure you can sit on the Supreme Court and separate your religious beliefs from your rulings? Now, I didn't make that up. It actually happened. When Samuel Alito was nominated to the Supreme Court, Senator Richard Dermott of Illinois said, how can you as a Roman Catholic and someone who's pro-life sit on the highest court in the land. Glenn, when that's going on in America, it's scary. Okay, here's the thing. Um, uh, America, as I see it, church is for Sunday. God, and the, as the founder said, nature's laws from nature's God is every day. That's why I believe we have to learn correct principles, and then man will govern himself. When we all understand, don't, you don't do that because it's wrong for this reason or this reason, then we, we, we manage ourselves, and we don't need somebody to nudge us or to, um, or to rule over us. Back with audience questions next. <laughs> Mixing of church and state, Mark has a question. Go ahead. That putting the prayer back in our schools, putting God back in our country, and inspiring people to find the courage to stand up for God and country would turn our country around. Would you stand for that? How would you do that? What would you I do to... I absolutely would. Re restore, restore what we did in 1962. What, reverse what we did in 1962. Right. Put the prayer back in our If you look at the problems that we had in the country, they went almost straight line, straight line up after we did that. Yes. My question is for Kitty. As I listen to your story and I hear you say that you recognize things that are happening now and they kind of make you wince because you've seen this before, to me the difference in your story of the past and ours of the future may be not so much what happened but what we did about it. So my question to you is, looking back, what would you have done rather than just, you know, maybe letting it happen. Can you see anything that you might actually encourage us to do in response? There's a lot of things you can do. I'm a lobbyist. 
you can introduce legislation. You yep. have to be very patient. It actually goes back to what you said. Vote. Oh, yeah. well, we, exactly. We have 30. You, your people elected Hitler with 98%. Yes. If and you, you go to principles. as a Christian. Yeah. You, the Germans voted their patriotism. They voted That's their right. pocketbooks. They didn't vote their conscience. If Christians in this country will vote their conscience, everything will be different. I can't believe that we, we, that we elect people, of people of faith, of all faiths, elect people that we know are lying to us, know are not living decent lives. They represent us. They represent us. Well, okay, does that represent us? I think in many cases it does. We must stop that, Ralph. Glenn, and a lot of it boils down to getting organized based on eternal values. You know, if, if business is allowed to organize as the Chamber of Commerce, and labor is allowed to organize in the form of unions, but then they go to people of faith and says, you're not allowed to do that. That's stay in your stained glass ghetto. Wrong. When they stay in their stained glass ghetto, they take away everything else, and then they come after you. you you've got to stand up together as a coalition of people of faith. Yes, go ahead. There seem to be a great deal of similarities between early Nazi socialism and what we're going through right now in this country. I mean, what is the answer? I mean, where, how, do we, how do we turn that back? Well, right now, we are very blessed that this is an election year. Uh, educate the voters. It's already happening. So we can take at least the U.S. House back and hopefully the Senate. Yeah. We, um, America, all we have to do is strengthen ourselves. Just strengthen ourselves. Know what we know to be true. And then just stand in that truth and be unshakable. Back in a second. We were just talking in the commercial break that we could do hours and hours and hours um, of, uh, of shows like this and just questions and answers. I think, Tiffany, maybe next week we just need to do a question and answer show and just concentrate on the audience. Maybe next week from New York. Good night, America.